just wanted to break into some MC in there, but then I realised it would be too embarrassing. This is Luke Cast, Loose Cast, live from Newcastle's infamous big market. To my right is Dean Saunders, to my left is Anthony Hepburn, I'm Felix Slayer, and we're joined today by MC Stomping, Newcastle North East legend, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing, all right? We are exceptional. Very excited to have you on. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is gonna be my phone episode. has been pinging all day with uh, mates buzzing with this one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely crap. That's so right. how did you become a new monkey MC? Well, I didn't become a new monkey MC at first. What happened was I was, I would say I was 13, 14. My brother started, I've got... I did have two brothers. I lost my brother this year, but we're not going to get into that, right? But I have two, two older brothers. My oldest brother, Mick, started, he started going out with his mates. He's six years older than me. And uh, he started going out, started going to raves. Uh, I think the Forest Hall Club had the rave tunes on. That got him, you know, I started interested in it. And then Rock Shots, even though it was a gear bar, had a rave night on the Friday, which had the MCs, MC Kicks, MC Buzz, um, all the DJs. Um, he started again there, so I think I was 13. I, he started like, taking us with him. And then I just I remember going into the first rave. The first rave I went to was in Prada, it was called Follies, and it was like a big warehouse, right? And I just remember going in and just thinking, wow, this is like absolutely unbelievable, you know? And I just got addicted to it, so... There was like a big gang of it from Gated, and I was like, I was 13, just gone on 40. <laughs> we started going to all the different raves. There was uh, the tunnel in Shields that was on at like two o'clock. There was obviously Follies. This was like different weeks, not obviously, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, Rock Shots on the Friday, that was chopper every single week, absolutely bouncing in there. Um, then Branch Stoughton had one on, <clears throat> what was it called? The Energy House, which was an all nighter, right? The After Dark one, which was an all nighter, which was in Sunderland, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I was going to them every week, every single week, walk on. And then we um, heard about this club doing spending work called The Venue, and it was on 12 to 12. But we started going, it was like 10, and it, it was actually changed till 10 till 10. So, I'm on my gun in, walking in, and you appeared to get in, you couldn't see the club, right? <clears throat> so you appeared to get in and then you walked through the doors and then you just walked in. There was like, it was like two dance floors, balconies all the way around. People like just, like, it was about 2,000 people in there every every week. But the MC, you had to look for him because he would walk around with a cordless mic and he just looked cool as fuck, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, he just walked around like a rock star, you know? And I remember thinking, wow, that, 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 I'm going to do that. I'm yeah. just going to fucking do it. Like, didn't know how, didn't, never MC before my life. Do you know what I mean? So, didn't tell anybody, just, uh, I think I was, I was still 14. So, after that, I went and started practicing in my bedroom, just, uh, didn't tell anybody. And I thought, how am I going to become an MC here? And at the time, G Force was number one. He was the resident at the After Dark, but he used to do guest spots all hour. He even done a massive one called the Galactica, um, on a race course in Ripon, right? Where, like, the top DJs, you know, like, Joey Beltram and all that. So, anyway, I thought, how am I going to do this? Yeah, because everybody used to copy off him, right? So, there was no, there was no, like, anybody coming through because everybody copied off him. And so, I thought, right, the key here is not to copy off him and to try and get a different style. Do you know what I mean? So, I used to just make little rhymes and then add to them. So, anyway, I started a... Uh, Started like thinking I was good enough. Went to the venue this night. Right? How old are you now? Just turned fifteen. So you thought you were good enough. So, right, fifteen. Right, love right, boom. Right. Love that. So, um, actually, <laughs> actually, it was actually it was just before I had turned fifteen. Yes. So um, went to the venue. Right. It was about seven o'clock in the morning. Techno T was on, but he wasn't resident. He had just it would it would between six six and seven. How about seven? The open comers would get a go. Right. So a Techno T at the time. He was tat- he's a tattooist, right? right? He had tattoos on his on his face. He's actually got that one removed. He had a big Dr. Martin put on his face, tattoos on his head, all his mates. What's he have on his face? All like? his uh, big tattoo, uh, big uh, boot, Dr. Big Martin da- boot on his face. Uh, Sorry, th- throwback from a previous episode. I still haven't returned them yet. Yeah, I feel like you said that I will return them, I promise. That's a, a, a polite reminder that I need to return them. <laughs> so uh, I was on, I went to, uh, and he, all his mates were skin heads in the wild, jumping around next to him, and all that. I thought, yeah. I'm going to take my chance here. I went, yeah. Because I go without Mike, I'm an MC. And he went, oh, are you like? I went, aye. He went, so what are you like? I went, eh, MC Stompton. And he, he, he like just laughed and he went, look, I'm not resident. He says, but I've got my own, um, my own night going on in, in concert, uh, mm-hmm. County Durham. He said, if you come up next week, I'll give you a shot. So I thought, all oh, right, fucking hell, this could be something, you know. So I thought about it, went to school and all that. Uh, 
And then I went up on the bus by myself from Gated, right? Like 14, 15 year olds. Took about fucking five of us to get there. Cross get county the lines, uh, do you know what I mean? I was keep asking the driver, yeah, how are we getting on? <laughs> for like five hours. So anyway, Gans up and uh, seen, seen Tech McTain. I went, yeah, I'm my mate up last week. And he went, oh, I asked. He says, look, there's a mate. I was literally a ball with about two people in. and uh, But I wasn't bothered, do you know what I mean? So I went on and uh, he started letting us on every week. So I started like learning me trade, you know, getting the feel for because a lot of the MCs thinking when the first start, they can't actually use the mic properly. Do you know what right. I mean? I was the same, but I learned in a bar with like two people there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So anyway, fast forward about a couple of months, right? So I'm still going to the right? So I went to the After Dark 1 this night and uh, there's no MC on. And uh, so I got to the blog, it works there. It was about four or five o'clock in the morning I went. Uh, yeah, where's the MCs? I always sent them home. I said, hey, what for? There's no make, right? So I went, oh, fucking hell, joking, aren't you? So I got up and I sits on the stage. The stage was these boxes. Like, uh, I'll put together, you know, like, um, what gymnastics would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Put the same size, right? But there was about six of them put together. So I got and sits on the, uh, sits on the box. Locks doing. There's the make in between the two boxes. Picks it up, right? Clocks the make lead. Like Arthur in. and the sword, innit? Right, clocks it in. One, one, two, mic check, one, two. Yeah. Cleaned up. I said, fuck it, yeah, we'll go. Uh, MC'd for about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Rocked it as well, right? 14, 15, you know, get in, buzzing with myself. Um, next week, the sound technician come up and went, yeah, you MC stop And I went, oh, hi, Wally. He went, yeah, well done, young, and give us the tape. I was like, oh, yeah. Couldn't wait to get to him, hide it in. And uh, that was me off the week before, and it was good. Started passing that tape around, do you know what I mean? Start getting on five minutes here, five minutes there. And then uh, this need, I got to the venue. So at the venue, as I said before, was like between... We'd have put six, six and a half or seven, the open comers would have a go, right? Started getting like five, ten minutes because technically I'd get in his residency, so he would give us a little go. This neat DJ Charlie comes on and he says, Yeah, young and that was fucking great, lad. He says, How oh, come Adam now you're working here? Yeah? I says, Oh, I'm not. And he went, hey, Right, he says, Yeah, come with me. Took us in the DJ box. He says, Yeah, see all these while sitting there, you know, everybody's wrecking all that. Everybody's like behind the DJ, MCs and DJs. He says, See this lad, yeah, this young un. They went, Oh, I see as well. Next week he's on with me. He says, And I'm going to tape it. He says, I don't want anybody going out of him because he's a young un trying to take the mic off him and that. He says, He's on with me. Is that all right? Says, oh, right, Charlie, I ain't bother. So he comes out the door and he says, Look, young un, I get all ass in. I kind of get you in. He says, But if you come next week, you're on with me for the full set. All right. And I went, All right, cheers. Gans to school the next week and all that. Only me, 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 it's new, but it, right. So I was, I was nervous, but I was buzzing, you know. So next week comes, I think. Uh, did you tell all your pals to come? Did you like, did oh, you? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I, wait, class. I, was, yeah. Was, was, and was, were any of your other pals trying to do what you no, were doing no, as also? No, no, you the only just one. Me, just so me. they're all but super Everybody support. was like, you know, buzzing for us. Well, behind so, it. Uh, I, so we all knew, but we're, that was it, you know. Uh, I hadn't even told my family about this. Like, really? At this point, I. So Gans doing it. Charlie was on. Prime time doing there was between like two and five, like where it would be absolutely bouncing, you know what I mean, in the venue. So anyway, I think he was on four or five. I went on with him for that. I went absolutely just, I thought I was a fucking rock star. I was walking around with a cord this make and you know, just honestly living, living my dream, you know. Comes off the make, the head doorman comes over and he says, yeah, young and same conversation I had with Charlie and before. That was great. That's uh, how come out of now? Tell them what the crack was. He says, we ain't there. And uh, an MC had getting the residency a few weeks before, which I was a bit pissed off about, right? Because he, he wasn't even getting on and out like that. He must have just sent a tape and I'd give him a residency, right? I'm not going to say who it is, right? Because he's, he's still a run and all that. And uh, he had been selling the, selling the cows in the toilets behind the Vunsa's back. And uh, so anyway, Jimmy Garns, Ed Dorman, gives him a crack, takes all his stuff and all his money up and comes back to me and he says, right, young and next week you'd be getting paid. Um... You'll get a guest in. Welcome to the venue. So, uh, was it. Sorry, it took a long time. No, 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 I was, I was that well was, that, was that, was that one. Eh? That was the story. And it wasn't Tazzo, was it? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, still Stick young at the time. But uh, I. So that that was the crack. That's how I got me residency, and that was like in the venue, which was like an all night at the time. Uh, that was the story. I find it mad like when that. people say like things happen for a reason. And that's like that might thinking, not yes. be in there, then you yeah. finding it's like the yeah. most like yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. So, so you obviously that. you said when you when you were doing it, all your friends knew and they were supportive, but yeah. your parents didn't know at the well, time. Well, no, no. Well, yeah. what happened was, as I say, I had two brothers, but living in a gated family. If I had said, "Oh, I'm MC," you know, I would have went, "What are you talking about? Yeah. Shut up, man!" You know, and I would have just <laughs> getting, you know, I would have just had me life for it. So uh, I didn't tell them until. Oh, well, 
the story with that is once I got me residency, right? Yeah. I brought the tape back and I see I got them doing stairs and I went uh, of course I had a high five back in the day, a high five. So I went put the tape on, I went, Yeah, what do you think? What do you think of that MC? Oh, he's good, I I said, that's me. <laughs> Shut up, man. Look at the who's he think? I said, that's me. And uh, I said, look next week, I says like, I'll get you I'll well I'll get one of you in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to take the piss in the, Over the, the yeah. course of the next month. In <laughs> and, uh, so I said, and then they did, they come doing, and they uh, couldn't believe it. Like, nah, that's you know? class. That's so, class. Where did the name come from? Where did stomping come from? I like that type of music. Now, like a bouncy, fast, like stomping music. Right. Plus, like, I'm, one of the first rounds I made was the STUMPIN. Right. Uh, so, like, I was, as I said, said before, I was just, I want. I wanted a different style from the style that was massive at the time, which was like J-Force, you know what I mean? And obviously that many people were copying off him back in the day. It, it was unreal. So that was the crap. So did the name, like, were you, did you have the name before anyone asked you what the name was? Or did you like, or when they asked you what your name was, you were like, oh, I need to come up with a name now. No, and no, I've done that when rhyme. When I first started practising, I came up with it. Do you know what I mean? Right. I wasn't actually first on it at the start. Um... Because nobody like really had a name like that, but um, as I say, I started making rhymes up with it and stuff like that. And the mad thing is, years later, there's like a lot of names that are like similar. Like uh, somebody was called bouncing, rocking, and jumping, and all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, aye, you're a trendsetter. Trend. That's what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like uh, that that story is incredible. I, I love that. Those those events that you were going to when you were 14. Were they all age events? Like, were they all age well, I was raves? Six foot when I was like <laughs> six foot when I was like thirteen. Like, honestly, so they weren't all age events. You no, were very were much teens, were sneaking in. No, yeah. Who were teens? Are. Right. Well, I was going to say because we talk when Tazo came in and we had a bit of crap with him, and he was saying again, like back in the day, it was so different to what so it is now, isn't it? So different. So I guess like when it was like you couldn't you couldn't get in a club now at what fourteen. <laughs> Well, yeah. I doubt it, it, no, it but it's different but now because it was private dance yeah, members clubs yeah, yeah, there yeah. was no alcohol yeah because yeah, um, he was yes, explaining that, that that's well. how they've done it and again it, it's just mind blowing to think about what it is now oh, to like mm-hmm. that, that, that scene must have been absolutely insane well, at the it time it was like in the 90s and it was all night that's so you went from the venue and then I got I suppose it was classed as headhunted uh, for the Coliseum I actually went and then thought, no, no, I like the venue better, sort of thing. And there was something happened. And I thought, oh, I'm not, you know, the atmosphere wasn't as good. And I went back. But then I got asked to date again. And them type of people, you didn't really knock back twice. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you know, the, let's just say there was, you know, there was, it was some characters. Was, so what, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but then the mad thing was, it got burned down two weeks later. I went back the second time. Two weeks later, the venue was burnt down. So if I hadn't yeah. said yes, that would have probably been that would have probably been it. Because the Coliseum was like, I mean, it was unreal the Coliseum as well. But the music down there was a lot harder. I mean, if you listen to some of the tapes now on YouTube, uh, you can still listen to them now and think, hey, that's that's great, that, you know. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of the people, obviously, in them circles when you were first starting, you still pals with them all now, or you still see many people, or has, has everyone moved away? And oh, still, like well, um, are you talking about the people who used to come with us, like, back in the day, all no, the like, people who DJ and MC? DJ and MC, are, uh, are many of them still around? Ooh, well, not really. They're, 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 they're having reunions. I'm doing a um, Coliseum reunion in a couple of weeks. They, nice. they, you know, you, there is a few that lasted the distance. Techno mm-hmm. T still gone, um, Jet and all them. I mean, a lot of the DJs are still gone, but um, the ones from the actual venue, there's only a I don't think there's many actually um, for Ty. Oh, but yeah. then again, because I was a Ben, I mean, I was literally a kid. Yeah. Nah, that's how I'm still... You were almost getting an illegal head start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about that, it was like 31, yeah. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me yeah. that it's 31, yeah. But then, but then I think that was 31 years ago. And then to talk about, obviously, so this is only the second time we've met, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. the first night we met was obviously, again, unfortunately, the Loose Fest weekend but fortunately yes. you were able to put something on incredible and digital yes. and I guess saying that 31 years later the reaction that you got in digital that night obviously yourself Tazo or Shaq in, well, insane you know it was devastating that day for everybody but what happened was I mean we were ready to go on at 12 o'clock and then we get to tell that it was cancelled so our rings Tazo and he didn't even say hello he just went I can't believe it mate I can't believe it do you know what I mean but then we get to phone call off Shaq to say, um, right, we're going to do digital. Nobody's getting paid. We're just going to go and do it because obviously, you know, we're 
with the circumstances and all that. But I think everybody knows that, like, well, me and Hoggy, me and Tazo were going to come out to Patrick Top and Ben Helmsley and Shaq, and it was going to be like, what, 8,000 people? It was going to be mind blowing. Still, you know? as amazing as digital as it still cuts that that couldn't happen, <laughs> does uh, it? But, yeah. you know, uh, these are the men to make it happen, aren't you, really? You know, so. No pressure but, for next year. I uh, need no pressure, like. Uh, but no, no. Um, so that's what I was going to ask you. Was that the first time you had seen us live? In a club, I know you had heard, but was that the first time you had seen like that atmosphere and stuff like that? Yeah, so obviously, I think we touched on it a little bit before. I was, did it, what do we call myself? I was like a, 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 a bad child, oh, a bad child, was I? Because I had my friend Perry, I had me Virg House, I, I didn't have the rock ports, yeah. that's why I was a bad child because I had me, I had me friend Perry, me Virg House, me trackies, you smoked tabs, but I didn't smoke tabs, <laughs> I've never smoked a cigarette still, and I didn't, I didn't drink at the time either, and I didn't have a fight. But I could MC as well. Right. <laughs> no way you're as much as the expert. <laughs> but I, I thought I could MC, sorry. So I was like a bit of a bad chav. But I um I obviously did have the decks and I and I had my new monkey CDs and I loved it all, but I never actually went to, to see anyone. Oh, right. So so although I loved the music, I never actually experienced it. So until what were, what was how, what was the clubs that were out when you were young? <laughs> well, like. well when I was doing all that or when I was listening to all that I was like I was too young for clubs probably and like I was saying I think when I was that age 14, 15 we didn't go into any nightclubs I think the first time I went into a nightclub would, would have been when I was 16 plus right. and everyone used to go Sunderland way first mm-hmm. and then obviously when you turned 18 you started going to Newcastle mm-hmm. uh, or at least where I was from Chesley Street like you went Sunderland when you were underage and then Newcastle when you turned 18 but there was, so there was no like clubs that, I mean the, I, think I think I'd done a what was it Crocodillo is it Crocodillo or something Crocodilo. in Chesley Street Crocs, Crocs, Crocs. yeah yeah Crocs Crocs, Crocs um, so they do like the under, the deer. yeah they do yeah. like the, the underage parties where there was not a drop of alcohol and everyone just came and danced to Rihanna or whatever it was at the time we never we never had the cool stuff like y- yourself coming over for when we were going uh, going out at that age I mean the, probably the best thing that I could have gone to was Baja I think everyone used to do but that was again just it was Newcastle way so we never yeah. went Is that, that that's where everyone went Baja when they're under age for, for, for me I think it was obviously I remember Rock Shots being the big one mm-hmm. it's Planet Earth Planet Earth. Planet Earth. Was it? It's <laughs> the building I live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the building I, I live like, in. They, used, they used to do like Yundas events there and that. Right. So like, yeah. like Yundas, I think like under 16s, I think it was or something back then. So I remember all them. But then for me, because I'm from Dinton, originally Dinton Village. Oh, I right. And like, obviously there was like Forest Hall Club. And I think even like now, Forest I think Hall like, Club, that's there's that somewhere, that. there's somewhere else near there that's doing it even, even oh, to this I day. Is it like Kenton or something? Is it somewhere near yeah. Kenton or Lake or something? Dinton. I'm sure I've done somewhere up there. Like somebody had, had us on up there, but it wasn't like a proper club. It was like like community centre or uh, something. Mate, it, was, it was a village hall. Oh, yeah. it was, I was there, man. Yes, <laughs> that was him at the front. Uh, it, was kid, <laughs> kid, it was a kid called Alex that used to go yes. to school with him. Yes. I done that. I remember because like it was on for about fucking an hour, and then it just got shut down straight away because oh, there was really? just bands everywhere. Like didn't know I seen that many people in it before. So it was, really? uh, but, I remember that was. But as much that. as I did used to listen, to it, we never had that option to go yeah. anywhere. Like I say, so. Again, and then as, as I got a bit older and obviously got into the, the club nights and stuff, it wasn't the route we went down. But then mm-hmm. obviously that night at a, a digital, seeing yourself live for the first time and obviously the, the performance you put on was absolutely incredible. It was a good need. It was, it was one of them where... Um, I'm going to put it out there, by it. the way. I've never seen digital like that before. Oh, have like you not? That. Oh, you was absolutely smashed it. it. It was one of them where like, <clears throat> it was just, everybody was up for it, you know? Mm-hmm. It was a crush situation where you really had to like, uh, me and my last had to like proper pull each other through because it was that busy you know mm-hmm. but uh, I, the atmosphere was unreal so bringing it like right up to date I mean we'll go back again in a little bit but right. bringing it right up to date where would be you know we just touched on digital but where would be one or some of your favourite venues to MC now like as in really current open now well I've done it um, i done Rave to the Grave with Scotty J last two weeks ago and it was absolutely chopping that was in the point but I think the point's just been done out in Sunderland yeah like, and it was, it was heaving you know um, I do um, I do digital still uh, yeah. for like hysteria and all that um, I've got a it is really good in there you know because um, what makes it what makes a venue good do you still do it like radio mic or do you like what makes a venue good on, to, to MC it on what the club is you can't really do the radio mic anymore right um, because in the venue it was how, how how they could do the radio mic is the the way the club was set out they know they have like a stage where you know 
you're just a little bit back from the from the actual crowd itself. Whereas in the venue, you could actually walk around. You could walk down doing the stairs on the balconies, right. doing on the dance floor and all that. For, and it was just the norm. But for, you kind of do that now, you know. For anyone listening or watching who doesn't know that, can you explain a radio mic? What's so a radio mic would just not be connected. Cordless? Yeah, cordless, cordless mic. Just yeah, so, mic. Yeah. so essentially a Bluetooth microphone. Okay, cool. So, and you would have to look for the, the ears at the bottom for, right. to, to find the... Uh, <laughs> To find the MC in the quality, nice. For the nice. Venue. Yeah, so, what would make it? What would make a good venue for you to MC in? Do you know what I mean? If you were to design your perfect venue to MC in, would you want to be like? Do you want a big DJ booth? Do you want to be high up? Do you want to be in the corner? Well, do you want to be like floor it level? Well, me, it's um, you know the different ones. I've, I've I've done them all really over the years. You know, I do like being like up above. Uh, the monkey used to be up above in lockdown. And that was meant because. You, you could you could see the crowd at a certain part and it would just be bouncing, you know, and, and uh, that, that was good. But the venue was good when you walked around. The Coliseum was good, being a stage, mm-hmm. the digital. They've all got their own uh, good points. But some of them have got their bad points where they're too close to the crowd um, and on the same level. So, you know, people can grab you and stuff like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? But, um, I mean, usually the crowd are absolutely mint, so... Mm. Um, you know, they don't normally do that. I mean, ask for shouts, but only on the phones, and there's only yeah. a few who would probably grab you, you know what I mean? And so. I was going to say, how different is it nowadays with everyone, how they are on the phones and stuff with social media, everyone record? Is it, do you enjoy it more now with all the footage, or do you prefer it back in the day when people didn't have the phones out? Um, they used to make signs back in the day. Right. Put the signs up. Uh, but note, like, like it is now. Yeah. You know? Um I used to do the old, uh, this is not Radio 1 and all that, and After Dark, like there's a there's a thing on the After Dark, and I went, uh, no shouts for a while, this is not Radio 1, and um, a lot of people, like, think to that, you know, like, click to that, and yeah. they like, reminded us of it over the years, you know, but um, no, it, it's, it's just part of the game, you know, it's part of the game. Obviously, you put a few out, you kind of put them on Arnie, because then the audio's going to sound shite, absolutely yeah. crap, just like shout Arnie. The mad thing is, Rock Shots used to be like that, MC Buzz used to put, I would say, 80% of his set was shouts, but because the MC was new, um, it didn't matter, because the atmosphere was just absolutely banging, plus the MCs that were on before him didn't used to really do that, but MC Buzz did, so I suppose it's, you know, different strokes or different folks, isn't it, really? If you could have one night again, in the venue and with the same atmosphere that you had back in the day, Aye. which venue would it be? Which of those old like oh, ones that are no the, with, that are no longer with us anymore? The best one, <clears throat> no, my favorite club of all time was the venue, right? But the best atmosphere, not not best atmosphere, but I seen Ultrasonic live at the Coliseum, right? And I was on the stage at the side watching them, and he is absolutely unbelievable, right? Live, you know, you've. Honestly, uh, what's his name again? Maloka Lee, absolutely. In his voice. You know he's the guy that was the vocalist for Public Domain, yeah, don't well, you? Yeah, yeah well, I know, I know, I know Lee really well. Right. Well, he is just some voice. Like his voice is just. But he done this thing where he had these. Um, oh, what do you call them? Floodlights, like like similar to floodlights. And he says, "Right, I want to see the crowd." And he put these floodlights, and then everybody was just on each other's shoulders like that. And then uh, I think he, oh, he he kicked him on one of his tunes, and the place just shook. And I've never, I've never seen where was that? nothing like it in the Coliseum. And stuff. Coliseum, absolutely, just unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Um, Has he got I, you up to do any of his? Are they not? Are they called nineteen ninety four? The nights that he does up in Scotland. I'm not in touch with them. I, I, I mean, they, well, I'm going to send him this clip, uh, and I'm going to make I, sure he books you. Well, I, I, I've met him a few times. Like um, I've done. Um, oh, well, they're actually on. It, the one I'm doing in a couple of weeks uh, in the Coliseum reunion that one again um, I've, I've met them a couple of times oh, are they on doing that one? Yeah, doing oh that nice one, one. I, I, what, what we say in boys we tempted yeah, to go yeah could definitely I be I right. genuinely would go could could definitely be. can we agree to that yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm getting for it you in? Are you, I'm in right, we're coming <laughs> getting all the chalky I'm back for the, uh, <laughs> well, for the reunion but you know what I'm going to purchase some rock parts now as well so <laughs> <laughs> you know what mate it's not as easy as you think you know you can't get rid of you can't get rock parts can you I don't think like I'm my my, I'm my favourite pair of rock parts that I used to have at, like oh, in okay. school so comfortable man waterproof oh incredible bits of footwear they have like, the reflective ones I don't think I did I think I can remember them they were sort of like like a dull brown but they had like trim on them and everything and I was yeah. like when I got them I was so buzzing like, they've, I, mean, I think 
they would probably be about maybe correct us if I'm wrong put in the comments I think they were about 150 quid or something at the time oh, yeah. but oh, they oh, felt yeah. like they were 10 grand oh, like they were yeah. the most expensive <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. I had oh, okay. I was like you've got rock pots or a house yeah. which one do you want to own <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why I didn't that. maybe I went over budget with the burger house and Fred Perry <laughs> House. I never had a burg house. Oh. Couldn't, couldn't afford the burg house, but I made sure I got the rock ports. I'm, I'm shit. I'm, do you know what? I actually think I'll be able to find that burg house still. You know, I think it's in me, uh, me loft at my mum and dad's house. You can house. wear it to the Coliseum. Um, right. I mean, I don't know if it'll fit, is it? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll I remember there it. was like, um, what was that one? What was the, the, the make of um, jackets? And it had like the paw on it and it had like the three bits on the paw. Do you know what I mean? No, and it was yeah, like, this, yeah. you'll, you'd know it if I told you. And this it was all like Henry Lloyd in my era. Like yeah. Henry Lloyd was a big Henry one. You'll know it, and this poor girl had been at like the factory outlet shop or something, and the oh. badge was like upside down, and she got <laughs> mercilessly bullied. Let's yeah. go, like, it was absolutely horrible. But so you, after all these years in the game, are you still writing new rhymes? Are you practising at home? Like, are you just pulling out old stuff and repackaging it? Are you, like, um, making stuff off on the, on it's the just, fly? It's, it's just making stuff up off... On the on the nights, I haven't never have done ever. Like wrote a rhyme in my life. It's just I I, I can't. It, it's not that I can't write rhymes, right? It's just I've never actually tried. What with me, if I, like with me rhymes, I'll I'll be at work, bored out my mind, and I'll just like I'll just go on. I want I want my head, and um, I I'll just like go on. I want it. I want it. You know, I like in my own little world, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then I'll come up with it. Especially if I've got a gig that weekend. You know what I mean? And I will like I'll try it, and it just comes. It's it's like. I'll not know what I'm going to say until I go on and say, like, my check one, one, two, and then the DJ plays a tune, and then whatever tune that is, it gets you, it gets your adrenaline pumping, and then it just, like, bang, top of your head. The more I think about it when I'm on the mic, the shit of it is, I want to think about nothing when I'm on the mic. Like, it's, it's hard to explain, because that's when I'm in the zone. Once I'm in the zone, I don't think about nothing, it just comes out, bang, bang, mm-hmm. bang, do you know what I mean? And then, as long as the DJ is, like, um, Giving it some, you know, which 99 times out of 100, the R was R, um, it's, it just comes off the top of my head. So, but I think that's because of the experience of yeah, the yeah. 31 year, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like most of my life I've been emceeing now. That, that, again, I, I think that's incredible, 31 year, and not slowing down anytime soon. Well, not, well, it's, it's, see, back in the day, right, I used to do um, Thursday, I used to do like Austin 2 o'clock, and mm-hmm. then on the Friday I used to do a place called Reds and Bishop, and then I used to go and do the... Um, what was it? Hysteria, which was just around the corner from um, the venue, actually right. in Spinning as well. Uh, and then on the sad day, I would do Club Lucy's till two, and then I'll go up the venue, right? And then we would go across the road to the bar, 10 o'clock when that finished, and then we'll go to somebody's house, and then I'll go home, go to sleep, and go to work on the Monday, and I'll do it all over again. No, I'll do your set, and I. I didn't stay, I just, they can do me set, love it when I'm on the mic, but then I'll go on home, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, because obviously getting older now, so, I mean, I couldn't, no way could I do what I used to do, you know? Yeah, it's a young man's, it's a young man's game, all the partying and all that, yeah. but uh, I still think you've got to experience that when you're young, going through all that type of stuff, but no, it's the performing, it's the being on stage, it's the being on with different DJs, that, that uh, does it for me, still. Right. So, Dean likes Eminem, Sort of are, love them. Um, oh, hey, well, um, right, sorry. We're going to do a UFC reaction podcast. We'll also have to do an Eminem album <laughs> reaction podcast. Has he got a new album coming no, When he does. He has, he, has oh. question, he has a question. Yeah. Eminem, I knew that you loved Eminem, right? Do you prefer old Eminem, Ooh. Marshall Matters LP, is my all-time favourite, right? Yeah. Or this fast stuff that he's doing? Because, I mean, it's unbelievable, the fast stuff, but, like, for me, I uh, like his old uh, Yeah. Stuff. Do, do you know what? I prefer his old stuff, but... His latest album, so not new, new album, because it was it was 2020, and the, I think it was the beginning of 2020, and then he brought an, the side B out the end of 2020. Um, so it was Music to be Murdered oh, by yeah, yeah. Uh, Side A and Side B. Oh, yeah. I actually think that's his best album. Oh, do you really? Yeah, it's, but, but other than that, I prefer his older stuff, but that latest album I think is absolutely brilliant, because I love just listening to him. And like every time you listen, I, you always pick something else up, because he's got yes. like, so many double, yes. triple entendres, hasn't he? Like, oh, I... You always pick stuff up. So, I mean, the go- you know Godzilla that he does? Yeah. Not a massive fan of Godzilla. I, I like Rap God that he did, and he, I, 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 love rap God. I could nail the fast bit in Rap God, and I was really proud of that. I bet you could absolutely do that and be like, oh, that, that was could me doing it slow Could you down. do it now? Could I do I, the fast I, bit I, of Rap God? I was God? just yeah. going to ask you. I could do it after the will camera. You do it if, will you do it if Stomping asks you? Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> no, I mean, if he does it, because he won't do it if I ask him, but if you ask him, he can't say no. So I'm going to do the fast bit of Rap God. Yeah. 
In front of MC Stuntman. Yeah, let's go. go. Then, let's do it. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm at the bottom, look at the cameras, I'm doing the room. I'm not like that. Let's go. go. How does he do it? He goes, uh, Samalama, do malama, you wish you manama, human, what I gotta do to get it through to you? I'm superhuman, innovative, venomator, rubber, so that anything I say is ricocheting off of me and it'll glue to you, devastating, never. De- no. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Thing is, I can actually do it. The, the, uh, the press the guys go, oh, oh, he's sweating me. <laughs> so, so when we come to Coliseum, give him the mic for 30 seconds and he's going to drop that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely that. That's I'm, 100%. No, I thought you were mad at like, you talking about Eminem, but like when I was like a Ben, we used to get with hooky tapes on the key side and like when you're seeing with the hi fi's like before, we would be like with mate's house on the weekend and like we'd be arguing whether people are listening to the monkey or like the after dark or listen to like Eminem or Doctor Dre. Oh, I so it's like that, that conversation geez, it happens mental because I mean yeah. I was gonna say before as well, like thirty one years, you, you obviously you see you've been in the game for now. Without putting like a, a pedestal on it or whatever. Do you find it mad that literally for like thirty one years I mean especially since I was a Ben, like you've been regarded as like the number one MC and rave, like, do you, do, you, do you still, have you ever felt that's been the case for you? Have you always well, when just I been was, like... When I was young, right, like, <clears throat> when I was young, I used to, I used to say that, you know, just because yeah. I was fucking young and daft and like, you know, but no, I didn't do that many, but when I do, I've tried and put on a show, yeah. you know, and I didn't say that about myself anymore, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and if other people want to say that, that's fair enough, but um, I think there's a few of them. Yeah. I didn't regard myself like, but I think if you're an MC, you've got to think like you're the best because if you didn't, you shouldn't be MCing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You have got to believe that you're the man when you get on that mic. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I respect each and every person who picks up a mic or guns on the decks or whatever and performs in front of people because it, it takes balls, you know? Yeah. Um, but I believe that you've got to believe that you're the best. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, what you're doing in the game, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I've been asked that question a couple of times in... Um, you know, I, I appreciate all the support that I get, uh, and I really do because I do get a lot. I think with me as well, though, I didn't do that many, um, and I'm not like I'm not on social media and all that. So I think if if I'm on a flyer, if I'm headlining somewhere. Uh, people say, oh, Stompin's on such and such, we can't see him there because you kind of get to see me every week. Yeah. So sometimes less is more, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I- Massively, in a way, because you preceded social media, you're almost, you're, you're almost, in a way, better off not being on it. Like, it, yes. it, it still perpetuates yes. the yeah, myth yeah. and the legend. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I, um, it, the, the thing is, that's why I didn't do, I think I've done one podcast before. This is only the second one that I've done because of that as well. It's like... Um, you know, it, it, it's not that I didn't think people are like us out like that. It's just me. I'm more going on a mic and and performing. That's that's yeah. my buzz. That's what I buzz off. You know, oh. that's why. Like, if people ask me why am I still MC, and it's because like I still buzz off it. You yeah, know, perform. Well, you're already part of the team now. You're already booked <laughs> in for a <laughs> you, UFC reaction video, an Eminem new album reaction video, oh. and then I'm just gonna add. When I have practice and I come back and do rap God properly, so I'm embarrassed at that. Well, you've got to do the full song though. Next time. I will. I didn't even finish the whole verse. Did I? I messed that up. I'm a, what we'll was your question? We'll bring the it? decks as well. <laughs> if if you didn't exist, mm-hmm. who's number one? There's a few of them. There's there's, there's, there's I've just said there. There's there's a few. Who so are. give us a couple of your top like rated of all time. Maybe a couple of newcomers. But who's who's on your radar as being? You know what I mean? Stand Top out. ones in the North East. Yeah. Right now. Thing is, I don't want to huff anybody. <laughs> that's, the thing, that's the thing, because fair. when you get put on the spot, you do, you do forget. You've obviously got your Tazos, your ES, Impulse, Scotty J, um, Stretches doing big things. Um, I am missing somebody out there. Is it like still, is it still like a massive thing of like people there's, coming there's, through the scene as well? Is it still oh, the young, always oh, like way I, way I, like? The youngins are coming through. Um, somebody I'm missing out there. And I knew I would, uh, but all in plus in its different styles as well, which I like. See, when I first came in, see the thing at the minute, which I'm not too fussed on, but the young and seem to love it is the putting back to backs on constantly. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas me, I like being on by myself. I yeah. just like they, one DJ me, and then I like to see another MC with the one DJ. You know what I mean? See that when. When I came in, you had to prove yourself. You had, uh, and then there was like I was classed as a young, and that was like I was fast, and you know what I mean. I was classed as a young, and then you had like 
uh, G Force, who had his style. You had a uh, Techno T, who was different. MC Rhyme, who was absolutely just you know his style was like TikTok noises and scratching with his voice. Everybody was different. Mm-hmm. So for a full neat of an all nighter, uh, you had you had difference, and people were like, "Oh, such and such is on at two o'clock, meant such and such is on." But no, it's like it's two MCs on three at one time and all that, and you know. I've, suppose that's what the young ones are like. So you've seen a bit of Dean's handiwork. I'm mildly dyslexic. It, but if we wanted to start an MC career from scratch, leaving this studio, mm-hmm. and if anyone's watching, checking you out, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking, I fancy being a rave MC? Be original. Be different than what's out there. That's how I've done it. Just be totally different than different copy off anybody, have your own stuff, try and get your own style. Um, I think it's different now because it's all internet, you know what I mean? Like, um, I, I suppose making videos now and then to send them in, but from, I just think, be your own style, believe in yourself, and um, uh, if you want something bad enough, you'll get it. I and totally believe that. Like, Love that. And I don't think AI helps either, does it? I'm surprised people haven't done an AI one yet. I've seen a couple of those. I've seen really? a couple. Of, I saw someone took this. Someone get like they just typed in "Write me a new Kanye West song with AI" and they did it, and it's it's I hate incredible. It all, right? <laughs> uh, right, we've got a little bit of loose advice. I'm just going to read it out. It's just daft. It's now serious, but he's going to ask the question. You can give some advice. We can give some advice as well. I'm going to play a little jingle, and then we'll crack on with it. Loose advice, loose advice, Don't take it to heart. <laughs> so loose advice this week The question is I'm just about to turn 18 And I'm going to go to my first rave Where should I go And what should I do To prepare myself for the event Ooh. Where should you go Well where could they go and see you soon I think would be a good I'm one I'm on at Hysteria uh, I'm on at the Coliseum Reunion And I'm on at Hysteria uh, Back to back with Lex uh, Letrix and, uh, Letrix that was one I was uh, There you go You knew it was going to come eventually <laughs> yes. You knew it was going to come eventually yes. <laughs> uh, Um that's that's what I was forgetting. I'm on back to back with them. Um, at Hysteria, at Digi, in a couple of weeks. Nice. How to prepare? Um, didn't get fixed ideas of what it's going to be like. Just go with a new open mind and enjoy it. Go with your mates, have a laugh, just um, and make sure you're there. Look at the lineup and who you want to see. You know what I mean? And then go on and just uh, just enjoy it. You know, Devin, like because a lot of people think raves. Oh, there's going to be trouble. It's you know, it's full of drugs, full of this, that, and the other. Just Devin have one of them. Devin perceive it to be like that. Like a small mindset before yeah. you go. Yeah, Dean, what would be your advice? Where are you going? Someone's going for the first rave. Where should they go? And what should they do to prepare? Well, as as we've been talking a lot about hangovers recently, so I'm going to drink a lot of water. Yeah, drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> drink a lot of water beforehand, so I don't uh, get too rough the next day, but. I think, uh, I think, like you say, just uh, uh, you, you get in the mood, don't you? You'll have some. You'll be listening to some stomping beforehand. Oh, getting nice! Excited, yeah, good idea. Excited. Throw a bit of Eminem in as well. To make it <laughs> five, five tracks from Stomp and one from Eminem. Just <laughs> the, the old stuff, though, not the new stuff. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, but I, I think, like you, you go and you, you you listen to the music beforehand, so you're getting in the mood for it. And like you say, just go with your mates and just don't don't think too much about it. Just where they're going to go? Where are you going to recommend them to go? Well, where we're going in a couple of weeks. Which is was oh, it the, the, the Coliseum Museum? Yeah. 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 Right. Honestly, I'm deadly serious about that. By right. the way, I thought you were going to recommend Face Melt there. I, mean, I couldn't have set him up more for some know, promo right. banner. Hold do you know on, what I mean? On. We're setting that up. <laughs> then Face Melt, then Face Melt. There we go as well. What's some but, future Face Melt dates you got? Uh, so December eighth has just been announced with the with the guys that I mentioned before in digital. Yeah. Um, so that that's a good one. Obviously, we have just done one in Liverpool. Uh, when will this go out? So there been. Couple of Fridays ago, when this goes out, uh, super successful. The guys absolutely smashed it. But the one in, the one in uh, digital on the eighth of December is going to be an absolute massive one. Uh, hopefully, we have a nice surprise of a couple of guests on the pod before nice. that. Uh, have you got? I mean, I don't know if a, would you have gone to a rave? Like, what would? Where would you recommend these days going to a rave? No idea. Speaking How would you prepare for a big <laughs> night out, mate? Uh, pre-drink as much as I possibly can. <laughs> And then uh, just enjoy the living fuck out of it, mate. Basically, that that would be my advice for any night out, mate. Do you, do you know what? By the way, we said it was fine, but I think that's the first swear word we've we've had all pod, oh, isn't it? No, I think that's a couple of times oh, did you? before. I, I missed it, but my bad. Was, uh, we said it was fine. But I was just I was quite kind of with me, mum, or just to tell us off now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've like been trying really hard not to swear. I so think, I think on my job. advice yeah. would be 
choose who you go with. I mean, I'm thinking back to like my like early raving days or whatever. But I think my advice would be pick your crew carefully. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. pick your friends who you go with carefully. <coughs> Swerve, fail to invite them like gnarly individuals <laughs> who could cause some issues over yeah. the course of the evening. So get a good crew. If I was going to recommend going somewhere, like I would always recommend going somewhere dark and dingy. Like I know like big events are always, they're the flavour of the moment now, like warehouse project, drum sheds, whatever. I love a tiny little club. Do you know what I mean? Like I love a tiny little sweat pit, mm-hmm. 300 rammed in, condensation dripping from the ceiling. Yeah. Like I love something like that. Get in there and it feels like, I know being in a big event feels like tribalistic in the sense that you're with 15,000 people, but with being with 150 or 200 people, oh, okay. feels like you're all literally in one physical body at the same time experience. Yeah. Sounds it. like the first after dark though and later. Was yeah. the dark. It was, you know what it was like? It was like um, underground car park, but it had graffiti uh, all over the walls and the graffiti they glue up like, nice. uh, was gluing and then um, you couldn't see the MC you could just see silhouette yes. behind them and it nice. was the atmosphere was unreal so yeah I mean I, I can't probably name these things now but look out for them little clubs man them little clubs that are doing still doing a little events like Vibing Peter Lee or there's all, there are still mm-hmm. these places that exist funnily enough they don't tend to be in big cities anymore because big cities have changed into huge yeah, events yeah. and things like that. But you will have, you mentioned loads of places, concerts, spending more, all these. Yeah. These places will still have little, oh. so don't have a little club, they'll have a working men's club or a village hall that are putting something on. Mm-hmm. And like, go somewhere like that. Yeah. Like, it'll feel like it's, a community. Because the people who put them on have got a passion for the rave still, you know, and if there's no one on, then we'll put it on ourselves. So um, there'll always be something. There'll always be something. With it. And obviously with the internet, it's easy to find as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Love it. Right, I think we're going to call it. Have you got anything else for stomping? No, I just absolutely loved it, as, as yep. we knew we would, and can't wait to get you back on for appreciate our reaction it. videos. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Cheers, Rule. Thank you, man. Any same. One, two, three, four. Thank you, sir.